versus Evil Geniuses. Grand Finals, Game 1. Trick EG, similar to yesterday in the winner bracket final when they picked a bounty hunter early in the draft and switched it to the offlane, it's a support lesh being played by Garter. And the moment you saw the Queen of Pain pick, you were like, okay, this has to be a support spirit breaker together with the AA. But guess what? It's actually not. It's an offlane spirit breaker for XC. They probably feel like Corlish Rack here might be countered a little bit too hard by EG's picks. I'm not sure if it was, but, you know, they just uh, they changed their plan up. For EG, we have uh, Skywrath Mage as well. One of their pocket picks, I would say. Pretty much no other team in this tournament really plays Skywrath anymore, but uh, as the panelists pointed out, good synergy with Clock, good against the... Winter Wyvern's Cold Embrace, but of course, a very glass cannon support you can easily get turned on by, by CDC's heroes, so what a game this is going to be. Yeah, man, I was actually worried what when I game? first saw the Skyrath Mage coming up, as uh, in wonderful style, we will have a moment to contemplate our thoughts, but to pick up something like a Skyrath Mage, and then you can have a Spirit Breaker charging around, Skyrath Mage isn't really the greatest, the panel we're talking about, like maybe, uh, like they're actually talking about like C-Dex pickups, but normally looking for things like Rubik or anyone that can really mess around with a Spirit Breaker charge, you know, when the jump comes. What is the purpose of this Skywrath Mage? Is he here to stop the Latrak? Is that the purpose of EG right now? It's just a, a good solution to multiple problems they will have. Uh, I think they, they wanted it for the silence, first of all, and to counter out the, the cold embrace of, of the Wyvern. And in addition to that, of course, the, as mentioned, the synergy with Clock is great, but also the synergy with Storm Spirit, I think, is, is very nice here for, uh, for AUI 2000. But mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. It's something else coming out here from, uh, from EG. As we do have a little bit of a, a problem, I think it's getting fixed right now. It looks like it's actually over in CDX booth at the moment, but yes, fix our problems nice and quickly. Obviously, there's so much on the line with the TI5 Grand Final, and while the prize money is the biggest we have ever had in the history of Dota 2, we are looking at more than that. It is the, the ability to claim the prize. CDEC, this is a team which started in the qualifiers. They came through. I'm glad you rise to the occasion, Fidrin. Uh, <laughs> I already sat down. I was uh, ready. Uh, I I'm, just kept I'm, standing. I'm too okay. hyped. i got to stand. Uh, stand up a bit. But, but right now, like, okay, so CDEC, you've come through the qualifier. You weren't even first in the qualifier. Eho came through in the number one position. So you had to play the wild card when you finally got to Seattle. The uncertainty of knowing if you're even going to play in the main event. And then you get to the main event, you feel the rest, you, you feel the relief, and then you just get yourself into your zone. And they performed so well. Now we can actually get back into the game because we're back underway. But CDEC, wow. uh, aggressive. Okay, he is... Uh... He's, he's stopping the block. Yeah. By coming in here and actually removing that tree, he's making it so the creep wave cannot be held in place by Universe's Cox. Ensuring he gets control of the lane. This is the only real counterplay that exists, unless you want to gank Clockwork behind his tier 2 tower at minute 0. Uh, not advisable. Don't try it at home. And You just have to run in and, and remove this tree in this case. Of course, if Universe, he would have seen it, because he saw the Phantom Lancer taking damage from the tower, and as a result, he'll probably just be cogging his, his creeps as best as possible closer to his tier 2 tower while they're still slow. It's pretty easy to uh, to get at least three of them into the cog, and he should still have an okay start. It's not, yeah, especially if he does that. <laughs> that's uh, that's well, extra good. You try and stop Universe, then Universe just stops the wave. But at least Aggressive is going to be able to still find his good farm. The creep waves actually been well blocked up by Universe. If he blocks this up anymore, he's going to be farming up underneath his own tier one tower, and the Wyvern's going to be here too to slow the creep wave down. He's about to get in range of his tier one tower. Safest clockwork ever. Uh, but we have to keep our eyes on the other lanes as well. So we have to look over towards the middle lane. Obviously, Samael versus Shiki. We want to see how this lane goes. There's actually top lane. Howie in real trouble. The Rock of Barrage from Fear. And a pushback XZ. Uh, but yeah, that middle lane. Samael versus Shiki. Samael's got the upper hand multiple times when they're faced up. A little bit of a double X. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> no Kale. All right, we're ready to go again. So yeah, this is a matchup I actually want to talk quite a bit about because the the Samel versus Shiki matchup was the one that favored EG the most in the winners bracket final that they still ended up getting two Odin. But Samel played a Radiant Shadow Fiend against Shiki's Dire Templar Assassin in game one, and he crushed him in lane. Like 
you know, Shadow Fiend can do well against TA if you if you are familiar with the matchup and play it well, but I don't think I've ever seen a Shadow Fiend at, at this level of play beat a TA out as hard as Samel did in that game. And in this game, he's off to a really good start too. This is a matchup that's generally considered favorable for the Queen of Pain. He's six and one against two and zero right now, almost pulling uh, Shiki back to his tower. Has to use the salve already. And it's not even the creep waves which are imbalanced at the moment. It's just Sumail getting the the more last hits and. And you're right, Shiki, he's in a, in a rough position. The bottle has already arrived for Samael, so he's going to have that regeneration to keep the spam going against Shiki. And that might mean you're going to need some ro rotation, some support. Is this when we look towards the mango carrying Mad Cow? It is the Spirit Breaker who can come and help out. And knowing CDC, they will be looking for some aggression early on one way or the other. For now, Garter's just going to take the top bounty rune. He might just rotate in to try and zone Samael a little bit, but needs to be careful. He is already, as they know, it's Samael needs to get out yeah, of here. He He's slowed down the stun. It's not going to connect, but Samael still so low on life. It's going to be first blood going the way of C-Deck. That's the start they want. That's the rotation they want, and that's the balance required for C-Deck to get up the upper hand in EG's mid lane. I feel like Samael could have probably seen that coming and go back. He actually has a top ward at the, he has a ward at the top rune that would have seen the rune being taken at two minutes. And that's when he just needs to back out immediately as he sees Garter rotating. So might have just been paying a little bit too much attention to his one-on-one -on -one matchup and, uh, and a little bit too little on the minimap. And this is obviously really good for CDC getting cheeky on the map here. XZ he might be in trouble, Frostbite. He's only gonna get harassed out of this top lane. There's concussive shot as well with the orbs to just push him down even further. But you've still got a salve left on the Spirit Breaker as he tries to soak up as much XP from this top as possible. But this is one thing too which we have to keep our eyes on. The difference in farm between aggressive as well as fear. Right now is 12-3 against 18-11. So many denies for aggressive. Universe, while he might be in, in range of this lane, it's not, a, it's not a wonderland for him to be here. He's not getting a hell of a lot out of the lane. I say that when I look at almost level 4 clockwork on an offlane. He's done a pretty damn good job so far. Yeah, he's just outmatched when it comes to attack damage. Clockwork actually has pretty good base damage, but PL is one of the absolute highest in the game. He currently sits on 79 damage against Clockwork, 64. So even if they're fighting for the CS, Aggressive will have the upper hand. And as a result, he doesn't have to buy a Quelling Blade. He's, he's not going for that, just working directly into a Magic 1. And we'll probably see his standard build into... Oh, well, let's see, yeah, he's just a double ganger away. No real threat from that, but it's the middle lane where the threat is. The charge coming on Samael. He's not level 6 yet, the last track's done. Well, I'm sure Samael stays exactly where he is. The lightning strikes twice on Samael. He really needed that level 6, but C-Deck, the rotation timing is perfect. And EG, they don't really have an answer. There's no movement coming out from Aoi and PPD. They're spending all their time inside the EG jungle. Yeah, I would I would like to see EG get a little more active. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job in the top lane as far as securing fear his farm. And they probably have a feeling that the overall farm game is going well, so Mail should... If you're this experienced and you play in a mid lane like this, and I'm saying this experienced, so Mail is still a young player, right? But he's played a lot of tough matches already. He should have a pretty good feeling that he's out farming his opponent. we will just know. We're going again on mid. Third time lucky again for C Deck. They're gonna charge into Samel. Still no level six under the tower, and there's just no support to come in. Shiki was low, but there's not enough damage from a revenge kill. And that's now 0 3 on Samel. But I look back to the old. Oh, the Queen of Pain thought he was safe, but Universe with a level three rocket flare from the bot lane picks him off on the way back, and EG gets some, something back. Notice, by the way, how good a job CDC are doing with the rotation. So the first gank, I think, could have definitely been avoided by Samael because he had the ward. The second one is with the smoke. And the third one is with the wyvern coming from the other cliff. So he's like, okay, Lashrak is top now. They're not going for the gank. They just mix it up. They keep the aggression on that middle lane. And they realize, when they look over their draft, Storm is going to be the biggest problem. I think that they have good solutions for pretty much everything else. The gyro um, matches up pretty well against PL, but we've seen in previous series that PL can definitely get the job done. They have the Winter's Curse against him too. Spirit Breaker is great. And even the Lashrak as a support, until gyro gets BKB, can really cause him a lot of problems, slowing down his mobility. Man, c are burning so many smokes early on. They're coming again on PPT. He's a man that has to keep the eyes out. Samal's trying to flash farm back up to the high levels and well, they're not going to find him in fact they move up looking for the gyro underneath the tier one tower look for the tp supports there's not one over on storm spirit but there is one for the crystal maiden 
don't know if she can really stop this attack, however, and see that, in fact, they've only got another three seconds left of this smoke before it's gonna wear off. And in fact, the smoke is gonna break because Fear's sitting in the tree line. So, uh, no joy for it, but they're still gonna charge in. And what can Fear really do? He can do a call down. Owie, the Sonic Wave doesn't kill him. Sealed up from the Queen of Pain, but it's gotta be mopped up by Fear. Looking for another one. No blink. Six seconds of peeping evil. Hold him here. EG take two kills. And then Z, he's trapped in the tree line. He wants to charge down. Do they have a stun? Hawkshot from Universe. It's up and running. And he lands him in the tree line. The seal is there. And XZ will die in the trees. It's three for nothing. The smoke gang took so long from Z deck. They tried to force the issue. And it was shoved back down their throat by EG. EG just read that perfectly. They backed out at the right time. I'm surprised CDC actually chose to go for that next to the tier 1 tower with a level 6 gyrocopter. The counterplay from Fury is very easy. Universe got a fast level 6 because of that rocket kill he got earlier. So he's able to jump up to the top lane and help out as well. This is, this is the moment where you realize, like, okay, you shut down Samael. It goes back to the older, older stories. Samael gets killed time and time again. There was even one game, remember, he was 0 to 7, and then just one fight, and he goes straight back up again. That was when Fear was playing his Juggernaut. They just buy space for the rest of the cores, and it only takes a couple of fights in this game of Dota to turn your advantage around. And right now, even Samael, he's sitting at the third highest net worth on the field for being 0 for 3 on the board. He's, he's above just the found Queen of space. Pain. Yeah, he's, he actually, he, he's actually out farming the Queen of Pain right now as far as it goes, but there is still the big factor, the aggressive factor. He is at level 8 and sitting at the top net worth at 3.5k. And he is going to get involved. He always does. Uh, he's one of the most effectively rotating early game carries. I think in other situations you would have even seen him being a part of, a part of that top fight at, at minute 6, but this time around he decides to stay bottom. I think he's still waiting for an action rune. Like, he, he picks up the bounty rune and then will farm up the jungle. But the action rune belongs to, uh, Samael. So he's flash farming up in the jungle, he's got himself a regeneration rune. And this Storm Spirit, actually really viable in the jungle, with the high level stuff and the static remnants, as well as the four points overload. You can just go through camp so quickly. Shiki's gonna have to find some farm. So, oh, oh, he's just gonna die! In That's the alternative! Oh, we came in at the right time with the blink. She can get away to safety. Lots of one charges there. Surprisingly enough, Keep Aoi actually went for the third point up in the Arcane Bolt. Yep. So he doesn't have the higher level up in Ancient Seal, which is normally what you look for if you're looking for the control, the, the control factor from the silence. Yeah, if he would have maxed out Ancient Seal, that would have been a kill. But the question is what implications... Universe bottom the lane. lane. He's trying to go after Winter Wyvern with the Hulk shot down with the Battery Assault. Wyvern Arctic Burn will just run himself away. The Battery Assault, Universe looking for the proper procs. But he can't get it on the Wyvern. And now they can turn this around. Splinter is still available and Aggressive coming in too. The Lance Universe is decides to TP out. There's no stun, so there's no kill. Good play under pressure here from Q. Just playing it nice and slow and getting out of trouble. Forcing Clockwork back to base is going to allow Aggressive to maybe almost take this bottom tier one tower or at least have someone else from EG run down there, if not Universe again, all the way back to, from base. This is, this for me just feels so rare. Like after you, after the fight fails for C deck on the top, they're not pressuring EG to really react to anything. This is now the third time Samael's gone into the jungle just to flash farm up. And even by doing this flash farm, he's brought Aoi up to level 6. So the Mystic Flare is now online as well. More issues for heroes like Spirit Breaker when they charge in or Queen of Pain to get burst damage down, when they also try and make that leap for a kill. There's a lot of problems which are starting to really rack up here for C-Deck. The one thing they obviously still have going for them is aggressive. And it's a very natural part of Phantom Lancer's uh, build-up to get Diffusal and or Mantis style, which both are really good against the Skyrath. So I think, as far as the PL is concerned, the only hero he's really worried about in this game is the Gyrocopter. And I, I do believe that's part of the reason that CDC really wanted to gank that top lane earlier and try to get some pressure out. Because not only could they have uh, denied the Gyrocopter some farm, but they could have also got aggressive at bottom tier 1 tower if this fight had been a bit more successful. But as it is right now, EG have stacked up so much farm for some mail. Like he got the, he got two or three jungle camps that were like double or triple stacks. So as a result, now he is actually second on net worth. He's overtaken the PL, who is behind the gyro of fear since uh, he got the better fight in the top lane. And they're about to get more. Universe is prepped on the hillside. 
He wants just to hook shot down the Spirit Breaker, allowing some mail to jump himself across the river. And there's your hook shot down, and the Cogs are going to push him back. Not the perfect initiation. Now they can try and turn around, but the Split Earth misses. You do commit the Nether Strike, and Universe trying to get out with the Mystic Flare. The Sonic Wave will at least kill off the Clockwork. And EG needs to back out. Then again, z -Neck does. Some mail back in. A huge call down from Fear. They're going to take one. They're going to take two. A double for the Gyro. And now they can have pressure towards the Tier 1 Tower. Actually, maybe not that much. I'll have to back up now, he's injured. And the rest of the team want to go back to their timings. See deck again, and they just commit into fights, which EG have the numbers. They have, they're ready to, to team fight up against Team Seadeck. Yeah, they were, they were missing the Wyvern. It was hanging in the bot lane, getting now level 7 on Q. Could have been a very big difference maker in that fight. But he stays in the bottom lane. He's more... He's most definitely going to be involved the next time. And the thing is, if you look at a fight like that, how it's structured, so they get a good call down from Fear, and then Sumail jumps in. Those two heroes will naturally be very close to each other when they go for the same target. And that's where the Winter's Curse can really mess up your fight. But obviously it wasn't available there, so EG get themselves a good win in that fight, and it's going to rocket Fear way ahead of the PL now. He's at more than a thousand net worth in the lead now, because he of course got two kills, and one of them was on that PL. And that's such good news for, for the gyro. Any, anything which will push you to get that, that damage dealing item after you've got your initial items, your required items for the gyro, allowing them to deal even with the PL does get more farm and more, more strength behind him. Samel oh. coming in for a jump. He's got a regeneration rune going all the way down the winter wyvern. Doesn't want to take a hit, still got more of that regen rune. And they do get the pick off. The wyvern will drop. And Shiki's trying to add as much pressure towards the middle lane as possible, force EG to come back. Same with the Spirit Breaker, that Creek Wave will reach the top tower, and who's the man that's going to be TPing in? It's the male, still with the back of that regeneration rune. It hasn't timed out yet, but he needs more support to TP forward. Either that or he feels he can go it alone. No, he's not alone. Fear waiting on the hillside. Now he's going to come down. Aggressive goes into the doppelganger, but the call down, nice done, but they're in the middle of the call down. No, we're sitting one to be. They're going to take two again. This time it's over on Aoi. The support is important. And it's now 9-4 in favor of Evil Geniuses. The gold will start to take a dip in favor of EG with 3,000 going their way. Net worth as well. And this is now three fights in a row where Cedric have come off worse for wear. Fear with a perfect read there. It was really... Like, you could tell exactly what he was thinking the moment he started running in. So they jump on the PL with the Storm. And instead of calling down on him, he walks down into the middle of the fight and casts the call down where he's anticipating the doppelganger will go into. And then he hits both the PL and the Lishrak who was coming in to back up. So he cuts out, he cuts off their escape path, giving them two kills there where... If he would have gone for the direct call down on the target, they would have got no one, I think. So really, really crucial play out of fear. Gets him two assists, and it brings Samail even... Like, he hasn't just come back, he's actually leading now. And the Skyrath of AUI gets two kills, which is also great. It's a, it's a very farm-dependent support, I would say, compared to a lot of others. It is very fragile, but can compensate for it with the right amount of gold, of course. Fierce getting back in front, though. He just felt like they've been prepping this ancient stack for a while, and Seedek are in no position to really contest it as well. So you're gonna get a lot of money. All right, this will complete is Yasha. At this point, is it worthwhile going in for something like... Is it just the, the, the standard SMY build with the Helm and the, and the Aquila? I think so. When you're playing from ahead, it's such a good item build for, for a Gyrocopter. And he's definitely going to go BKB somewhere down the line, but I don't think he'll go Yash into BKB in this case, since he has a really good supporting cast. Uh, the Clockwork can, of course, help him out a lot. If he gets focused really hard, it makes so much space for some mail. Oh, man. PPD. He's reading this perfectly. He threw down a sentry ward exactly the same time as the Radiant Observer Ward went down next to the Tier 2 tower in the middle lane. I, I kind of feel like EG have managed to find Cedex's number in this game. Uh, they understand where the move is going to come. They try and find the trade-off. And like the one time when Cedex then group up for a big smoke commitment into EG's jungle, there's no stacks. You can't even steal that. Fear went down for the Radiant, uh, for, for the Dire Ancients at that point. And the rest of EG moved into the Radiant Jungle now. They still do claim the first tower of the game, and it's an important one. This is the access point tower into the Dire Jungle that CDC loves to play in. So they're probably not going to be able to defend their own either. So as a result, they'll just look to, to pressure the top tier 2 as much as possible here. They do have ward superiority in the area. It's already been secured quite well inside the Dire Jungle. Sure, PPD got the sentry down for the one closer to tier 2 mid, but they also have the one above the or next to, rather, the, the Tier 2 tower top on the cliff. 
Let's, let's have a look. I don't think they're going to try to give it away for free here. They want to fight for it. Well, if they can take the T1 tower first on Bob, then go up, then it's, then it's all going to be fine. Samal's going to be the man to TP up. Again, this is what now his third or fourth regeneration rune he's managed to find. And he'll look for the opening over on C deck. There goes your T1 tower going Good the way jump. of fear. It is going to be the SMY build from him. And there goes that observer, what I was talking about. The PPD will mop up with the help of the Satter. And Steenek are waiting for him. The SB actually is going to charge in some mail. Ball lining's away. And now it could be PPD with a frostbite trying to catch him out of position. The Orchid is up for some mail so early. It's going to guarantee a kill on the Spirit Breaker. And they might look for more here. That regeneration route has been triggered by some mail. The hot shot in, catching out Garner. The call out will be there too. They cannot help the pony. You'll lose with the weapon as well. It's three for nothing. EG a rampaging through game number one of the TI5. Grand final. They are getting the maximum value out of this region. Storm. Storm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just for creeps this time. I actually thought he was going down for the Queen of Pain. And the region expires. That's that's efficiency right there. That was a questionable charge from the Spirit Breaker. I think XZ, I don't know what he was expecting. He wanted to just force the Storm to jump away, which he managed to, but he should have seen the Orchid and the region. They have plenty of time when Sumail was inside their ward to check him out. And the counterplay from EG just way too quickly. Uh, way too quick there with EPD coming down from low. For a team that's only taken one tier one tower, the amount of money that EG has got is unbelievable. Now he's almost finished a full mech on a support Skyrath mage. I think he doesn't he have it. I, actually, yeah, you're right, he does. It's all on the courier. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's all back in his stash. Well, there it is. TP's back, completes it up. So we get S and Y under 18 minutes. You get a full mech and arcane boots on a Skywrath mage. Even Clockwork has a blade mail, which is causing all sorts of troubles for C deck. Lashrak at this point will basically kill himself. Speaking of Lashrak, it's interesting to see he didn't level up his ultimate. It's something we generally see core Lashraks do, because they want to be more in the middle of the fight since they have more farm. But Garter being a support really wants to try to keep his distance. And it's a big part of the, the strength of the hero, really, the Pulse Nova, but. In this game, I think he's making the right call, not leveling it, mm -hmm. and just getting the point in Edict for in case they win a, uh, a team fight where he's playing from the back, they can start taking down towers with uh, with the Edict. Is this the right call for the Spirit Breaker to go for something like a Hand of Midas? Is this not going to delay C deck? I just think at this point they have to play for late game. They they know they're far behind in this game. It's a pretty unusual situation to see them in. We should remember though that the first game of the winner's bracket final between these two teams, EG actually had a really good lead in game one. And then all of a sudden CDC got a really good team fight and turned it around, so... Top lane, Samal gonna go on the Spirit Breaker. Still has an Orchid available and Spirit Breaker. He's gonna pop from the Orchid damage, even with the TP back. Ooh! Just one more attack from Samal would have ensured that. Maybe miscalculation there. Looked like he let him live. He, he did. A little bit of mercy there. He definitely had time. Oh, for middle lane. Attack. You actually got the CM ulti going down a blink out from Shiki. He'll be able to survive. Universe initiated him with that hook shot. And now they're trying to fight against the towel, but aggressive. Sealed up the Mystic Flare, burning through the PL. One chance can't keep him alive. Not with the call that connects. Sonic Wave will not do enough. So Mouse back to the fight, but not enough mana. But then again, we went to Wyvern. Locked in control. They find the pick up on him. Moving to the next target. Down to Garner. He is just getting golden rocketed down by EG. While Mercy might have been granted on the top lane, it was not in mid. And I want to point out something we forgot to mention, the this, this stat that we just saw earlier. Samael got the fastest Orchid we've seen in the tournament after dying three times in lane. <laughs> they just stacked the jungle so much for him and they maximized his farming output really, really well. And now they get a tower as well. And you know, that's the problem, right? You could see the game plan for CDC was, okay, we want to gank the storm and slow him down so he can't do exactly what he's doing right now. Should have ganked him five times, I guess. I don't think that would have helped. What they had to do is contest the EG jungle. But it had to be something that was also flagging for C-Deck. Like Skyrath Mage did a little bit of chip damage early on. Maybe you're thinking, oh, the Crystal Maiden's just in the jungle farming up herself. But because they were just so efficient on their stacks, EG, Maybe c -Dick just didn't see it coming. Right now, they will have to see this coming. The charge coming in from XZ. Up on top of the hill, he's going for PPD. Able to connect, but Universe has hookshot available. Actually canceling the Nether Strike. Now with a Frost Blast, and the ulti is up. Let it go! She keeps pulling himself in. PPD does not want to be here. In fact, they're hookshotting away to safety. I don't know if PPD will be able to survive this. He's trying to run himself away. The charge is starting up again. It will be the Sacrificial Crystal Maiden. But that is the first kill c has got in a while.
Yeah. And note, notice, by the way, how CDC are taking the fact that they're behind, right? They're, they're not... They're not starting to play defensively and like, oh, this this is not going well. We have to just farm up for a bit. They, they're really just looking for whatever fights they can with their charge and with their vision. A lot of other teams in this situation would just let EG get complete map control and dominate them, but they don't play like that. That's just how it is. Top lane, the TPs are coming in. That's the clockwork on the front line. Universe turns on the blade mount. Aggressive hurts himself so much. And Samael, well, it gets the Orchid over on Aggressive, but that's not the target he's really searching for. Keep your eyes over on Q. Watch for that curse. And see, they could try and turn this one around if they really want it. But fear behind him. Concussive shot will slow down Aggressive. No doppelganger available. But EG, they're getting locked up in the creep wave as well as a couple of PL illusions. They do not find the counter initiation on C deck, but they do save their tier two tower. It's a little bit. Questionable buyback there from PPD. I think he bought back so late that he would have never caught up to the fight anyway. Maybe he was expecting Samael to be able to catch there as well as Universe, but neither of them got the initiate uh, they were looking for. Storm missed his ball lightning, and then the fight is kind of over. When you use your entire mana pool and you don't get the, the jump with Storm, even if Hookshot comes in from Universe, they probably lose the fight, because it's very important for them that Samael is able to deal the damage he, he can right now. Speaking of that, Samel might have some issues. Queen of Pain just pick, picked up an Orchid. So the Queen of Pain now finally has a Disable against the Storm. But I also wonder then, what is our next item for the Storm? And it's already answered. He's got a Bloodstone Recipe. So that's his next target. The Shrag. That's not a healthy place to be. Universe fighting with the jungle at the same time. PL may not let this go unpunished. Universe wants to run away, but it's not going to happen until Storm. Samel's in. He gets the Orchid the PL. They bring in the cavalry! Perfect turnaround. Universe is just too tanky. It takes a really going again. Big jump this time. Orchid on Orchid. They will have that curse and a slow down Samael. Can he jump away? No, he'll pop. That is a huge kill for a Queen of Pain. At the same time, though, Fear is almost taking out this tier 2 tower by himself. Now he's sitting on the sidelines being a spectator, and there goes the tier 2. But the amount of money for the Queen of Pain, 780 gold just for that kill on the Storm Spirit. 571 was also shared with the Wyvern. And he's able to pick up the Glimmer Cape. That's a huge item for C-Deck. Yeah, this is the item against BPD, Arrow Mage. Run, pump those little legs and get out of there. He may not have enough life. There she, no he doesn't. He is so totally dead. As XZ will come in. No 17% doesn't require it. The Queen of Pain Orchid Pop does the work. Universe, however, well, he's got Hookshot available with Fear here. He'll cancel the TP out. You might have killed the Crystal Maiden. But more was taken from me with the Spirit Breaker now on the sideline for 43 seconds. It's still advancing the game plan of CDC. Of course, this is not the early game they were looking for. They're 10,000 behind, and EG have done an exceptional job at utilizing their Clockwork and Storm Spirit combination, just finding all these pickoffs to thwart the, the usual playstyle of CDC. But with that said, Peel is getting toward his defusal, and we've seen so many games aggressive how scary he can get. Generally, we haven't seen him dying four times in the early game, though, so it is definitely a little bit of a different type of game. It really is. And, and but EG think... can't just play slow. Like, if they just rest a little bit, I think CDC are going to bring the fight to them when they have the defusal. If you look at the itemization oh, no. of EG, like, they're preparing themselves for this. You look over towards Aoi. Now, you've already done your work and picked up a mech for the team, but now he's going to buy a full drums as well for, for the team. Every item which EG have got, even the bracer, which is over on the Crystal Maiden to go with the urn, it brings up over a thousand life and allows her to stand during the fights. EG are prepared to see they're going to try and fight them. And because the supports are also picking up these items, it's allowing the course to go for other things, like the early Blade Knot from Universe, the work into the into the Aghanim Scepter, and Fear, like he got a full BKB as well, 25 minutes in, to go with his SMY, or the Orchid from Storm. And then the Bloodstone follow-up, and with the death of Roshan, that's the full Bloodstone done and the Aegis the Immortal to go the way of Samael. I think EG are prepared for Cdex attack. Oh yeah, they definitely are. They, there's no doubt that they're leading this game by a lot, but it's, it's, it's always it's the only threat 12, of one 000. swing. It's, only 12,000. It's, 12, it's 12,000 net worth as well as experience. It's it's a decent lead for EG. That's the furthest CDC have been behind at the main event. Like, quite a, by quite a bit. I think almost every game we've seen them play, they've been leading. And then they had that one game against EG in the Winner's Record Final Game 1. I believe they were behind by like five, six, maybe 7,000 in that and managed to turn it around. Mm -hmm. 
This this one could just be too much for even CDC to manage. It might be, but you never know until it's over. For now, CDX still keep their minds on the prize, and that is EG's base. If they can take a fight in Iraq's directly after, there's an aggressive observer ward, which is actually watching the movement just outside the dire face. And then, as far as the rest of their vision goes, it's really not that terrific. They leave one defensive ward around the tier 2 tower, but both wards are perfect. So if they are trying to push out the top lane, they'll see EG preparing a defense. And if they are looking to uh, defend their bottom, they'll see where EG are looking to attack from. For now though, EG, they're preparing more of a presence in the mid lane. And that's where their observer ward is, watching aggressive moving around. And another one also on top lane, but they won't see the Invis Queen of Pain. The one around the mid lane has 20 seconds left, and I think this could be the reason why EG are just going for it right now. They have the Aegis on Storm, they still have the vision that they can use for a little bit longer. And Fear with the BKB as well, with 10 second duration remaining, can very easily lead the charge. There's a very, very limited number of options for CDC to take this fight, they're just gonna let it go. Well, once again, as always, they will be split pushing a bit with Aggressive, as much as he can. All this pressure is being put on by EG. He still needs more money. He's another 700 before this Diffusal Blade is completed, and by that time, he may not have any exterior towers. They need to do something about this sometime soon. For EG, just keep out farming them across the map. It's still a, a steady gain going the way of Evil Geniuses. Even though aggressive, yes, he's finding more money. The rest of his team is kind of stalling up a little bit more. The Spirit Break is finding something. But he had to buy a Bracer as well as a Cloak just so he can survive in the next engagement. And Queen of Pain, actually a lot of money on Shiki. He's the highest net worth over on Cedic at the moment, just about to crack the the, uh, the 10k mark. And what does he do with his 2.8k? Do you look for aggression?